Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. It's been a busy day for football. We've had to delay the show, but we're here now. The draw has been done and Fabrizio's here to give us the latest Manchester United information and hopefully we can get some good stuff out of this interview today. Thank you so much Fabrizio for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Beth. Always a pleasure. It is always a pleasure, but getting straight into things because I think there's a lot of questions that really want to be asked recently, you know, with the new appointment of Rangnick that everyone's really excited about. And the first question I really wanted to ask is about the midfield options in January. Us as United fans feel like we can't wait till the summer to get a midfielder in because we're so short in that position. David Ornstein recently linked us to Kamara from Marseille and also we've been linked to the RB Leipzig midfielder Hadara. Is there any news on that or do you think Manchester United will go for someone in January and really trust Rangnick with his appointment? Yes, I can say that the plan to sign a new defensive midfielder is something that, as you said, Manchester United had in their mind with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It was planned to try to do something <clears throat> next summer or in January if they had the opportunity. So they were considering this chance. They had a list with some names since last summer when May United had in plan to sign a new midfielder. But then at the end, they decided to spend money on Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, and so nothing happened. But they had Kamavinga in their list, Saul Nigets and Ruben Neves in their list. For next summer, with Solskjaer, the names were uh, Declan Rice, always been super appreciated by May United as many other clubs, and they always had other different ideas. Ideas. So the plan was to sign a new mid midfielder. Now with Ralph Ragnick, it's not been decided yet from what I'm told who will be the player, if they will be able to sign a new player in this position, and what kind of player. So they want to decide together with Ragnik, is the board with Ralf Ragnik. They will meet in the coming weeks to decide who is the perfect player and if it's the case to sign this player in January or not. You mentioned two names and Kamara, as David Orson said, is one of the players, one of many players that May United are scouting, but many clubs are on this player. So nothing has been decided because he's not extending his contract with Marseille. So many clubs will be on this boy and nothing has been decided. Haidara, of course, the link is with Ralph Ragnick. They have, he has a great uh, appreciation for this boy. He's convinced that he's one of the players that could be perfect for Premier League. But from what I'm told, at the moment, there are no contacts between Man United and Leipzig or with his agent. So at the moment, he's still quiet for Haidara. He's appreciated by Ragnick, but still quiet. I think we have to wait more than one or two weeks to see if May United will sign a new midfielder and what kind of player, because there are also other names in the market that could be interesting. Yeah, exactly. I think the midfield is, is something that Manchester United have really kind of been looking at for so long now. And we've been short in that position, we would say, for over a year. Would it depend on, is it one of them positions that would depend on outgoings in January, whether we brought someone in? Is it going to depend on whether what if Pogba makes a decision? We know he won't be leaving in January, but it's something that really needs to be decided. Would it depend on Jesse Lingard parting ways? Is that a factor to think about when going in for a midfield option in January. Yes, for sure, outgoings will be will be super important. This is not only for Man United, but for all top clubs. They need to sell players to be able to sign new players. And this is what is going to happen for, for Man United. So they need to clarify many situations from Donny van de Beek, I think is the first one, because, OK, now the manager changes, but he's still playing five minutes per game, uh, talking about important games. And so this is why they need to clarify with Van de Beek, what is the situation? We have to see what happens with Anthony Martial after his agent saying that he wants to play and so to leave the club in January. But we have to see what kind of proposal will arrive to Man United because at the moment the situation is still super quiet for, for Anthony Martial. Uh, we have to see also what is going to happen with Edinson Cavani. So there is still a lot of things to clarify before saying that Man United will sign a new player. The plan is focus on players to leave the club in January and then see if they have the opportunity to sign a midfielder with a good price. I don't expect Man United to go on a player like Declan Rice in January. I can't say that it's impossible, but it's more than difficult because top clubs and important players are not moving in January. Uh, players like Declan Rice with a price that is more than 80 million is going to be super difficult in January. And this is why I say opportunities because opportunities what Manchester United are looking for in January if they will be able to offload or sell some players. Obviously, you said before that Declan Rice is super appreciated and he's obviously been appreciated by a lot of top clubs. January to sign him would be unlikely, but do you think Manchester United could wait to the summer to try and move to Declan Rice before signing midfielder in January for a cheaper price? Do you think that they would pay that much for Declan Rice in the summer if they knew that that was an opportunity to get him when it reaches the summer transfer window? 
No, about this, I think it's too early to say if Man United will be prepared to pay because will be Kitwan as 10 who will be the manager. And when you spend 80, 90 million for a player, you always decide together with the manager or you will have a problem. So maybe we'll arrive another play, another manager with different ideas. And so it's going to be complicated to, to, to decide right now what is going to happen. Ragnik will be involved in the decision. So his opinion will be super important. What is 100% sure is that Man United appreciate the rise. But let's remind about Chelsea and Manchester City. Both clubs really like this boy. And this is why it's still absolutely an open race. No one is leading the race. Many clubs interested, but West Ham have been very clear. They want to keep the player in January and they want something super important in summer to sell the car rights or the player will stay. So, uh, And West Ham have been very clear on this story many and many times. Also when Chelsea wanted him with Frank Lampard. So nothing has been decided yet, but what I can say is May United will go if May United will go for this kind of player, like Declan Rice, spending 80, 70, 90 million on a single player in the midfield, will be decided with the new manager. Uh, we will see if Ragnik will stay as a manager, if he will be only part of the board, who will be the new manager if they will change. But this is going to be super important to see what kind of player Manchester United will need. For example, if you have a manager who is playing with 3-5-2 or if you're going to with a manager playing with 4-2-3-1, it's a completely different kind of midfielder you need. And this is why they're not deciding right now what they're going to do next summer. Yeah, that's that's fair enough, to be honest, because you don't know who's going to be in charge in the summer. We don't know if Ragnik's going to stay or who's going to be appointed. So I do think the majority of things will be done in the summer. But Anthony Martial is a player that's been quite controversial when it comes to United fans. There's quite a split opinion on him. And obviously, we've seen his game time massively drop recently. We saw his agent come out and said that he will be looking to move in January and that Martial simply just wants to play football. And when Ragnik was asked about this, he said Martial hasn't speaking, spoken to him about it or the club personally himself. And that is what should be done. Obviously, Ma Anthony Martial, he's on 250 grand a week. That's very hard when you're in a contract to get that on loan or to get him sold. Do you think Anthony Martial is looking to get that move in January and is looking to move away from Manchester United? Or do you think it might be a tactic from his agent to kind of get him more game time? And does Rangnick see Anthony Martial as part of his plans? Obviously, he's not trained with him yet, but what is the situation regarding him? No, I'm told that this is not a strategy from his agent. So it's true that the player is not happy with his, with his pace, with his game time. He wants more than this. I think the feeling around Martial is not about one game or two games. It's that they feel that Man United with Ronaldo, with Rashford, with Sancho, with Greenwood, they have many and many players also for the future in this position as the last ones I mentioned. The feeling for Martial is he's not key for Man United, but it's not just a matter of moment or months. It seems that he's not a starter for Man United and he wants to be a starter. He wants to be an important player for his team. So after spending a lot of time waiting and waiting for this opportunity, at the moment he wants to change. He wants to feel something different. As you mentioned, his salary is big and so this is why it's not going to be easy. Last summer uh, there was some interest from Italian clubs, but then when they knew about his salary, it was almost impossible to pay for Italian clubs for, for Anthony Martial. Um, we had rumors about Real Madrid also last summer because Carlo Ancelotti has always been appreciating him as a striker, but Real Madrid are not signing players in this position in January or this is not the plan, so Real Madrid are super quiet on this. We had rumors about Tottenham, but my feeling is Tottenham will go for different kind of striker. Uh, they, for example, love Dujan Vlaovic, and let's see what is going to happen. Many clubs are on Dujan Vlaovic, but for Martial in this moment with Tottenham, nothing is going on. So it's not going to be an easy one for, for Martial in, in January, but it's not a strategy. The player wants to try something new and he wants to feel important. I think it's a really similar situation to Donny van de Beek. These boys love May United, love defense, love the atmosphere, but they have to play. They want to play and they don't want to waste their time. So this is why it's not easy for them to manage these kind of situations. Yeah, I completely agree. And obviously Manchester United keep giving out these contracts with massive wages. And then once a the player has signed them, it's really hard to kind of get out of that and find a new club. Um, talking about players with contracts, Mino Riola has been talking about Manchester United yet again, kind of in the news, in the press. Firstly, coming on to Haaland, he was speaking about Haaland's options and he did name drop a few big clubs. And then he kind of reversed that statement on Twitter. We're putting out that statement that it wasn't just them clubs. He's got many options and that he might not even move to Manchester United this summer. But considering Mino Riola's kind of tumultuous relationship with Manchester United, do you think that with Erling Haaland, it is still a possibility that Manchester United could get him in the summer? And will, despite what Riola says, is he basically, def he's definitely going to move this summer, surely, isn't he? About Holland, talking about Manchester United, I think what Raiola said uh, about Man United and Man City 
was a clear message. So I think the feeling around the player is that at the end he's not going to, to Man United because also what Mino said was very clear. He said Man City won way more titles in the last years than, than Man United. And when you say something like this, you know, I, I think it's not going to be an easy negotiation because Raiola is an important person for, for Holland. He's not just an agent. He's very important in his decision. His relationship with his father and with the family is incredible. So this is why it's not going to be an easy one for, for Man United. Then at the end, never say never, because I still remember that when Man United signed Pogba from Juventus was completely difficult, so completely different situation, but a really difficult negotiation. And Man United changed the strategy and they did it. So never say never in football, but at the moment they are not leading the race and they are not in the process to sign Erling Holland. So my feeling is, my personal feeling is at the end, Holland will have serious chances to leave Borussia Dortmund in the summer. So my answer is yes. I see like an 80% or something like this for Holland to, to leave Borussia Dortmund in the summer, but they need to pay. And we have released close 80 million, but it's not just about the close. The next club of Erling Golan has to play for Mino Raiola, big commission for a big, big salary because Holland and his camp, they want a big salary and they think it's normal for top players around Europe to ask for a super salary. And so we say 80 million for the close, but the real deal is way more than this, way more than this, with a long contract, with super salary. So this is why it's going to be complicated for many clubs to afford this kind of of salary and this kind of deal with, with, with Borussia Dortmund for Erling Haaland. Yeah, and one, another one of um, Riola's clients is Paul Pogba. And obviously, there's been a lot of talk about Paul Pogba. It's Riola stated that Pogba has many options to, to leave the club. And he also said that there's a contract on the on the table for Manchester United that we spoke about in other interviews before. Rangnick isn't the type of person that wants someone to be kind of on the fence about Manchester United. He's made that very clear. He said you shouldn't need to be convinced to stay at Manchester United. You should want to stay. And he also is a manager that we know likes to plan for the future. With Paul Pogba, do you think it is one of them things where he will wait till the end of the season just to see every option he has? And do you think it is likely that he, he is going to stay at Manchester United, but he, is it the fact he wants a higher contract? Is it the fact he wants to know how Rangnick succeeds with Manchester United, what the plan is, what the new manager is going to be? Is it the fact he wants he wants a plan or is offers elsewhere just more exciting for him right now? Yeah, starting on the Pogba, on the Pogba situation, first point is I'm sure that Paul Pogba will wait. I don't know if it will be till the end of the season, so if it will be May, April, June, we will see. But Pogba will wait. He's not deciding now in December or in January. Nothing will be decided now because this is how Mino Raiola works. This is how the player is thinking. Uh, the decision The decision is not just about football side. Of course, it's football side. But it's always about also his family, his life, because it's going to be maybe the last top contract of Paul Pogba. He's not super young right now. And he spent his whole career with Man United and with Juventus. So it's not easy for him to decide on not, not only on a sports side, but he also wants to decide on his personal life side. And this is why it's going to take some time. He wants to consider all the possibilities that he has. He knows how in transfer market things change in one week. For example, Paris Saint-Germain, were, to, to mention another player for, for, uh, for Mino Raiola, Paris Saint-Germain were not interested in Donnarumma until last January, February, because they were thinking of different deals. And then in May, they called Mino Raiola and they signed Donnarumma. And we were talking about one of the best goalkeepers, and he was a free agent too. And so everything changed in May, and they decided in May for Donnarumma. So this is why I think that the strategy will be similar, to wait and wait till Paul Pogba will make a decision. The proposal is on the table, as Raiola said. It's a proposal that May United did last July. It's an important proposal with a very important salary. So from May United, they are convinced that they did a super good proposal, also talking about difficult financial times for this, for top clubs too. But at the moment, there is no answer. It's not a yes or no from, from Paul Pogba. He has not answered it because he still doesn't know what he wants to do. And so the only thing we can do on our side, on journalistic side, is to wait to see what Paul, what Paul wants to do, when Paul wants to decide. But as of now, nothing has been decided and everything is absolutely is absolutely open. Of course, he wants to know about Man United project. And I think this is something we can understand because it's been really complicated the last months for Man United. A lot of rumors on Ole, then he was fired. Now with a new manager who is going to be a consultant of the club in, in few months. And so they will have maybe a new manager soon. And he wants to know what's next for Man United before signing a new contract. That is an important contract for him because it's one of the final contracts of his career. So I think we can also understand part of his decision. 
but I can understand also what Ragnik said, to be honest. I think Ragnik was fantastic in this statement to say, okay, we are Man United, we are a top club. And I think this is what Man United missed miss, miss many times in the last years, to have someone to take this kind of position. So we are bigger than any other player, the, any player playing for our club, but more bigger than Cristiano or any player. This is the feeling that you have when you talk, for example, of Real Madrid. When you talk about Real Madrid, they let players go if they're not happy with no problem and they replace them and they restart because the badge, the history, the tradition is bigger than any player. And I think this is the same for Man United. And having Ralf Ragnick saying this is very important to show what kind of mentality the new era of Man United will have. Exactly. I, I, I love it personally as a Manchester United fan myself. The fact that someone's going to come in and kind of put the club first and, and kind of just put it out there to all of the players that if you don't want to be here, then leave. And I think that's a perfect example. You could have the best player in the world, for example, Cristiano. He wants to be in Manchester United and that's what a lot of fans kind of love about it. And, and the football club should come first before any player, any player that there is. So it, 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 it is a hard one, but Pogba, it's going to be one of them that we're going to have to wait for the summer to see. Um, but regarding the right back situation at Manchester United, we've seen that Dallow has recently come in and got quite a lot of game time. Wamba Saka seems to be kind of put to the bench now, despite his injury problems. Obviously, when Oli was the manager at the club, there was a lot of talk about Kieran Trippier recruiting for a right back. Is that something that the club is still looking at? Are they still looking at maybe going to recruit a right back or are they happy now with the situation at the club? I mean, it's only been a short period of time, but Dallo has started to impress and he has started the last couple of games. So is a right back still in, still in Manchester United's sights for recruitment? No, at the moment it's not a priority. It was one of the possibilities if Dalot was going to leave the club in January with Ole, as you mentioned, because they were looking for Trippier as a potential replacement, but they were not intentioned to pay 40 million. Atletico Madrid also in August, they always asked for 40 million. The only proposal, it was not an official proposal, but the negotiation proposal at the end of June from a United was for 14, 15 million euro. And Atletico Madrid replied they want 40 million. So it was impossible for a United to match this, this, this price tag for, for Creator and Trippier. They were hoping for January to have a different price. But now, as you mentioned, the manager is different. And I think I'm not surprised, to be honest, with, to be honest with Dalot. I said also here many, many times, and you know so well, that Diogo Dalot, for me, is really underrated sometimes. With a Similan on loan last year, he was amazing. He's a super professional guy. When he plays, he's always giving his best. He's super appreciated in the dressing room. So it was just a matter of time. He was needing to play to have some confidence. Now you have Dalot. You have Juan Bissaka that could be, of course, an important player when you need I think spending money on right back like Trippier in January with his age, I respect the player because he's an amazing player, but his age, he's not super young too. Uh, so I think he's making no sense in this moment for, for Man United. They will go for priorities. But now Dalot, he had some approaches from, from Roma. Last summer, Borussia Dortmund and Sevilla wanted him. So many clubs wanted Dalot and Roma were prepared to pay in January for Diogo Dalot for, to pay for a loan fee with a buy option. So they wanted him at all costs. But now the answer around Man United is so clear of course Dalot is playing and Dalot is an important player for United so I don't see big news on this side at the moment and I really hope they will give some chances again and again to Diogo Dalot because my personal opinion special player very good and he needs some confidence he just needs to play sorry I can't hear you sorry my, oh, yes. my mic just muted them but I 100% agree I really like the way Dalo was coming to the team and kind of put his claim out there to be be the first choice. In other words of recruitment, I've got a lot of people in the chat here. Obviously, Barcelona are going to be looking to sell quite a few players and Frankie de Jong is someone that has been looked at to possibly one of them players that will be sold. Is there any chance at all that Manchester United would kind of go in for that deal? At the moment, I told the situation is still quiet because, of course, it's not an easy moment for him. Also, playing with Osasuna was not a Frankie de Jong level, so I think the atmosphere around him is not positive and this is not helping. But I'm told that the player is still focusing on Barcelona. So there is nothing with May United at the moment. No negotiation from May United with May United. And I think if something is going to happen, will be in the summer. Not right now. I don't see anything happening in January for Frankie de Jong. Also because Man, Man United have many quality midfielders. They have on the back Bruno, Pogba, many kind of players like this. So they're looking for something different in January. Let's see, maybe in the summer what happens. But I'm saying that the situation is still under control with Barcelona, that the player wants to 
still fight for Barcelona and protect the situation with Barcelona. So at the moment, there is nothing big going on between De Jong and, and Man United. And we have to remember that also Xavi, one week ago, said in public that De Jong is untouchable. So it's Xavi Hernandez in public. So I don't see them changing their mind in three weeks, in four weeks, and sell De Jong in January. And obviously, we've talked about midfield. as obviously the last question, because I know that you need to get off soon. But Van der Beek is... He's still not getting much game time under under Rangnick, and I know it's a new manager. It's only been a short period of time, but is he someone that is definitely looking to leave now in January? I know he was linked to Everton, but the the interest is cooled off with him since the new director of football has come in. Do you think he would definitely kind of go for that move in January? I think, as I said before, that if the situation continues like this, also in the coming weeks, Van der Beek will leave. He changed his agent because of this, because he wants to leave and he wants to play. He loves Man United. He was hoping to change the situation with Ragnik. But if he continue like this with Van der Beek on the bench in key games, I still see him leaving the club. I don't know yet where because at the moment he's still a bit quiet on this side. But I'm sure that they will look for a solution in January if he's still not playing. Well, thank you very much for your time. Everyone in the chat appreciates you coming on. We appreciate you. you coming on. And hopefully there'll be another interview soon and we kind of have more updates about Manchester United and Obviously, we'll see over the coming months what happens. But thank you for joining us, Fabrizio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always super pleasure. And see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, guys, I mean, I think we got a lot of good information from Fabrizio there. Obviously, there's not too much, too much information coming out at the moment around transfers. As Rangnick's only just got in charge, he's going to be looking at how to improve the team rather than transfers. But already coming in for the short period of time that he has, he's going to kind of have an opinion on what transfers he wants because he's so knowledgeable around football. He's made such good footballing decisions before regarding transfers. I mean, I think everybody's seen that start in 11 of transfers that he made when players were young and kind of not recognised yet by the media. And they've gone on to become top, top players that now have an extremely high ma market value. So I do think that he's going to know now, looking at that squad already, just from his pure amount of football knowledge and kind of his experience in the past, what, what appointments that we need to make. And I really do think that Manchester United should trust Ralph, whether he's here until the end of the season, whether he kind of carries on that role, like he said, he maybe might suggest to happen. I do think considering he is going to do that contingency role and he is, he is going to be part of our football club for quite a long time. I do think that Manchester United should trust him. And personally, for me looking at it, I know Fabrizio mentioned it might have something to do with outgoings and with Donny van der Beek looking certain to leave, that's another midfielder that we've lost. Pogba is a midfielder that could be leaving. So as we've said many times, you can't have full trust in a midfielder that's go that's planning to leave and planning to get a move. If it is the last minute of a Champions League game and you need to kind of put your life on the line, is he going to do that? Matic is, we've been told many times, can't play more than 60 minutes, can't play two games in a week. And then we get left with Fred and McTominay, who, to be fair, under Ralph, have been decent but they're not top-level Manchester United first-team midfielders. And we're going to be having to play two games a week, playing elite high-level football. We're going to need a midfielder. So, personally, I do think that we might sign a midfielder in, in January. I think we're going to have to. I think you can't rely on McTominay and Fred to take us through the whole season. And if you're looking at the likes of Adara and Kamara, these are players that, yeah, they are good players, but they're not going to be the price of Declan Rice. They're not going to be that high, high price that Manchester United aren't going to be able to pay. And I do think that in January, if you offered a good amount to these players, and obviously while Frank is, is respected, Manchester United, we've kind of come up in the league now. We're into the top four, still in the Champions League. Got a lot a lot to offer to these players. I do think we should massively make a move in January. And I do think that is something that will happen. I do think it will because we're going to have to. You can't get through a season with just McTominay and Fred. And obviously it's looking likely that Donny's going to leave. But obviously in the comments, guys, do you think it's right to let Donny go? Do you think he should be getting more game time under Ralph? Because I'm interested to know what you guys think. You know that I'm such a massive Donny fan. But he's still not getting the time under Ragnik. I mean, time will tell. It's only been a couple of games. But do you think he do you think he deserves more game time? And do you think there's anything that can kind of change his mind now? But you know, with this with Kobe coming about and possibly Brentford and Brighton being postponed, you're getting further on into the season with less and less game time. And a lot of players are going to have their eye on international football as well next year. So it's going to be an intro. I think summer's, not summer, I think January is actually going to be an interesting time for Manchester United. And I could probably see us bringing a midfielder in if, if I'm honest. And obviously with the right-back situation, Fabrizio was saying that 
Dalo is kind of really coming to the team. His professionalism, he gives everything on the pitch and we're no longer looking at a right back. So if you kind of, I mean, we, a lot of United fans said we're kind of desperate for a right back. wan doesn't give us an output going, going forward. If wan gets injured, we've basically got no options. Do you think it's right to put your trust in Dallo going forward? I, From the games that he's played, I would say yes. I think his attacking output is great. I think he can only improve. He's still a young player. He's very well respected. And I do think, I I, I, I honestly think Diogo Dallo is going to be our first choice right back. I think Ralph rates him. Obviously, he started two games in a row under Ralph now, under his proper management. And I think... I just think Dallow, when you're watching play, I know I know Ambasaka's form has been ridiculously poor recently, and that's kind of why he's gotten into the team and obviously injury and stuff. But when you watch Dallow play, is the really would Trippier coming in really be a benefit for us? I mean, it, it would be a benefit when you look at his squad depth, but if you sign in Trippier, he's gonna to want to play every single game. He's what he's gonna want first team football. And I think Dallow really kind of I think he's kind of set himself apart recently. I think his attacking output's been great. I can't really fault him. Two clean sheets as well under him. I do, I do think, I, I do think he is a way going forward. And if I was Manchester United, that money that you'd be spending on a right back, I would be putting it towards a midfielder because our, our midfield option is, is is massive right now. And we don't, we need a midfielder. We need a midfielder massively. Obviously, speaking of midfielders, Paul Pogba not signing the contract. Fabrizio basically confirmed that he won't be signing the contract until until some until summer if he even decides to sign it. I mean, he might also be leaving the club. I think from what Fabrizio was saying about Donnarumma kind of got approached in May and people approached at the last minute. When Mino Riola kind of comes out and talks about Paul Pogba's got so many options, he's got these options, he's got He's going to say that because he's his agent and we know how controversial Mino Riola can be. But if you think about it, I actually don't think Paul Pogba, Pogba has as many options as Mino Riola says. And I think if he, he did have them options, I think it'd be a lot more clear and I think we'd hear a lot more about it. When you look at it, do, do, is there a club that's going to go for Paul Pogba? Real Madrid's massively got the sights set on Mbappe. They've recently signed Camavinga. PSG's there's been kind of no talks about it in the, and a lot of a lot of sources from PSG kind of made it clear that they weren't going in for Paul Pogba and then you look at Juventus they don't have the money to go out and buy Paul Pogba on the contract he wants so I'm very confused about what all these options are I think Manchester United with the contract they've got on the table right now to be the highest paid player in the Premier League that's what he wants to be on now and now we've kind of put I think it's a 400 400k a week contract on the table for him I think the reason he's he's kind of leaving that contract there is because that is a very appealing contract for Paul Pogba with the with the options he's got at the moment. And I do think I've said it for so long. You guys say in the comments if he deserves that contract and whether you think he's going to sign it. But I've said for so long that I generally do think he is going to end up signing that contract. I mean, people might approach him at the last minute, but they're going to have to beat that wage, which I know there's no transfer fee and there's no fee that you can have to do, but they're going to have to beat that wage. And also, they're going to have to be a higher prospect for him. They're going to have to be a team that is above us and kind of got more prospects for us going forward. If you think about it, the Premier League is the best league in the, in the world. And if we get into the Champions League as well, we've kind of got a new manager coming in and we're evolving, our style of play is evolving. I do think massively it, it, it is a good project to stay at. I mean, I might be biased because I'm a United fan, but I, I, I'm I, 90% sure that Paul Pogba is going to sign that contract when it when it comes to the summer. Because if you think about it, where, where can you realistically see Paul Pogba going? Where can you realistically see Paul Pogba going? And on top of that, you've got players like Anthony Martial, who's apparently... I, I mean, we've seen Martial before come out and say, we've seen his agents say that he wants to leave. And it's kind of been a tactic to get more game time. It's been a tactic to kind of be that sole member, a really important player for Manchester United up front. But Romano just told us that it isn't a, it isn't a ploy, it isn't a tactic. It, he generally do, does want to leave, which I don't know about you guys, but that is, it, it always is a little bit frustrating when a player wants to leave the club that you support. It, it, it is frustrating. And people have mixed opinions on Martial. I personally like him as a player. I think he's got a lot to offer. It hasn't really worked out so far. So you've got to think to yourself, is it the best time to part ways with him? But when you look at, look at it, Cavani is going to leave. Ronaldo is aging. He's only going to be here for a couple more years. And then you've got Rashford and Greenwood. 
Greenwood, I think he's a massively great prospect, but Ralph instead has said he's not quite a number nine, he's like a half nine, and Rashford is in poor form at the moment, and you can't always rely on him to be consistent. I know for a fact that we all have our opinions and we've all said we've got so many options up front, but when you look at it, it is good to have them options because a lot of them do offer something different. And when Rash Rashford is in such poor form at the minute, could Martial come into this team and make a difference? When Cavani's injured, could he play up front with Ronaldo and hold the ball up and, and compliment him? Because I think as a player, the way he dribbles, I've, as a forward player, I've always said, he's the one that kind of makes the best decisions on the ball when it comes to assisting. And we've seen his relationship with Bruno. We've seen his relationship with... Rashford, I do think these players complement each other. And yes, he's not a mainstay in the t- team right now, but he has got a lot of good qualities. And I think people are quick to forget that when suddenly he goes out of form. And do you know what? It is it is bad to kind of be an inconsistent player for Manchester United. You need to be consistently con- consistent. And Cavani and Ronaldo, I think, have come in and kind of shown Martial levels when it comes to that. And he's kind of kicked his toys out of the pram and says, I want to leave. He's not willing to kind of fight for game time under Ragnick, which personally for me, I don't like that mentality. I think as a player, you should be willing to fight for your spot in the team and not straight away just completely close it off and be like, nope, not doing that pressing, not doing that. I want to leave. I'm not even risking trying to get into the team because that's that's what's happened. He's not even had a training session with Ragnick. Ragnick said he's not even spoke to him about it and that he needs to speak to him as a him as a manager. He he could have an opportunity under Ragnick and he's and he's kind of thrown that away before he's even had the opportunity because he's told his agent that he wants to leave without even having a training session. And we've seen Rangnick kind of mentioned him before and how much of a good quality he is. And he's not even willing to kind of fight for his spot in the team. So I think he obviously does want to leave. But for me, looking at that and like what Romano said, not many people are going to take a player on 250k a week and his transfer price is quite low at the moment. There's people that always have been fond of him, but they're not willing to put the risk into him. They're not really willing to sign him with that big of a contract. So, I mean, personally, I think Martial is going to end up staying because I don't see him getting a move. But what he really needs to do is fight for his spot in that team because I do think he has a chance to fight for it. But whether he's going to do that, I don't know. Sometimes when players' decisions are made, players' decisions are made, and he'll be thinking about international football. They'll want to get into that France squad. And he's not doing that at the moment, and he's not been getting into the team. But he's not even tried it under Ragnit yet. So it'll be interesting to see what happens along them lines. Also, I, I didn't ask um, Fabrizio about this situation, but I, I really wanted to. Speaking about the goalkeeper situation, Ragnik has said that David De Gea is number one. And this is a problem with Manchester United constantly giving out big wages. Like our second keeper is on 150 grand a week. That is not okay, especially when he, he barely plays for us. And with Henderson, he's going to be a hard one to get out of the club as well. He's looking for a move. Apparently he wants to leave, but who's going to take him on 150 grand a, month, grand a week? It's going to be us again, paying off half of his wage probably and making him go out on loan. But realistically... Like what? What club wants to do that? The club, clubs that he can go and play for, like possibly bottom half of the table, Premier League teams, maybe the Ajax are in talks of signing him. They're not going to want to pay that money. So I, I think Manchester United, and I hope Rangnick desperately changes this. I think they massively need to change the way structure. I think they massively need to change the way that they give out these contracts. I think they need to have better negotiations with these players. And I think they need to start putting the club first instead of putting the players first, which is exactly what Romano touched on there. Is a breath of fresh air, Ragnick coming in and saying, this is Manchester United. If you want to play for us, play for us. If not, I'm not going to convince you to stay. And it's so refreshing to have someone straightforward and someone putting the club first. So it'll be very interesting what happens with a lot of these players. It looks like there's going to be mass exits for a lot of, for a lot of players. I mean, Martial, Lingard, Donny van der Beek, Pogba. There's a lot of players that are looking to leave. I mean, Matic at the end of the season. And it's going to be interesting to see who's going to come in and who's going to go out because we are going to have to make signings. And it'll be interesting to see who, who we end up signing. Declan Rice, another name. Apparently, Manchester United still really, really appreciate this player. And I mean, I think Declan Rice would be a great signing. But the fact that it's not kind of been spoke about yet, whether... Rangnick still wants his player, whether he wants to wait till the summer. These are things that should already be known. And I think if they were known, then Fabrizio would kind of had a bit more information on that. But again, Manchester United are quite slow out the blocks to kind of make these decisions. And decisions massively need to be made, massively need to be made around Manchester United. But all in all, 
it was a good interview from Fabrizio. We kind of learned a lot about the Pogba situation, the right back situation, the midfield situation, whether Martial's going to leave or not. And also Rangnick kind of having this new mindset around Manchester United. And obviously it's been a big day for football today. You wait for Champions League. That was a bit of a mess, but we have Atletico to look forward to now. I mean, I would like to assign a midfielder by the time we play them, let me tell you, because that's going to be a tough game with the way they set up defensively. Their style is just completely oppositely suited to, to how we play. But then we do have Ronaldo, who kind of is renowned for scoring hat-tricks against them. So, I mean, I'll see you on the next show, guys. Thank you for tuning in. There's going to be more Fabrizio interviews. And thank you to the chat for kind of being so lovely today, doing this interview. And I'll see you on the next one.